Hello everyone and welcome to my Bakar guide. You've all been waiting for the infantry epic hero for the Wildberg faction. So let's go over all of his talents, pairings and skills with the artifacts for Bakar, the unyielding blade. Yes, we're covering Bakar. Finally, Bakar. I know a lot of you guys love the big orc minder. And don't get me wrong, I am a big orc boy myself. I was, as you guys know, if you've listened to any live streams that I've done, a massive WoW nerd. So playing orcs, to be fair, was my game plan. But unfortunately, I feel like Bakar's been done dirty. So what we're going to do today is go over those skills and we're going to go over the pairings and different uses of him at the moment. But we might have to even potentially try and do some experiments to see if he's going to be any better than he currently is. So if you enjoy Call of Dragons content, smash a like, comment and subscribe to the channel guys. I'm here every single day giving you Call of Dragons content. And that is either hero guides, behemoth guides, events, even fun videos and you name it i've got it you know and that's the whole point and this channel is all about call of dragons trying to teach the game as well as learning the game as we learn anything new as you can imagine so with all that said let's go into his skills because his skills to be fair aren't too bad but there's a big problem within that role so we look at Bakar's first skill, he does a nice 600 damage factor, but the real actual benefit of this skill is the fact that you're going to get a 20% increase to all damage dealt for 4 seconds. And this is an absurd amount of damage increase that you are allowed to put on a multitude of pairings. So this first skill honestly is a really good skill. The fact that it's a 20% damage increase, this is obviously going to benefit multiple different heroes depending on what your goal is with that march. When we're going to the fifth one, this is an infantry base stat. So we're going to have 10% attack and 10% defense bonuses when we are using the infantry units. Kind of the standard 20% worth of stats split into 10 and 10 as we all know and love by now. With the third skill, and this is where another really great skill for him does actually apply. And that is when Bakar's Legion is hit with a normal attack, they have a 10% chance to inflict gloom onto the target. Reducing that attack by 5%, going all the way up to 25% for um, 4 seconds, and this can trigger every 10 seconds. So this is the little bit, and this is the where my main issue is with Bakar. Even though the defense is a nice stat, we would personally rather have infantry health here because that would benefit way more with an attack reduction, meaning you're going to obviously survive a lot longer. So it is a bit of a weird far fetch. You are reducing their attack. Yes, you are obviously having an increased physical defense bonus, which is really good against obviously the archers and cavalry units, but... When it comes to everything else, the health stat would have been way better. You would have preferred it against the mages, for example. So that is his first three skills. But his fourth skill is the lackluster of all of his skills. This is the garrison base skill. So you have to be making sure he is on your wall or he's the primary leader or deputy in that garrison combo and if he is you're going to get 15 percent hero skill damage taken reduction and a 15 percent hero um granted in healing but as we guys know healing in a fort generally is not a good idea it's a way to actually make your hospitals fill up even more and even worse it feeds even further merit to your enemies so the his awakened skill is actually a really cool skill. It is almost a brand new passive to his kit, which it is, but it's almost like Nika's mini um, awakening skill. So whenever Bakar's Legion does have less than 50% units remaining compared to Nika's, which says if the enemy Legion has below 50% units, what this does is then allow your Bakar to then trigger that bleed. And this is an amazing amount of extra damage that you're going to be applying to the enemy march. So it does close down fights. But that is the problem with this hero though. He's a really good fighter as you can imagine with the amount of damage he can dish out. But 
the amount of damage he dishes out doesn't justify the amount of damage he takes. And that is the big key thing with Bakar. Bakar honestly does take a massive amount of damage. And that is one of the main problems with him. And that's why I personally would not recommend investing heavily into Bakar in the opening seasons. If you get him at 5-5-1-1 through keys, that is a fine you know, choice to use maybe as a patrol killer for the front line. You can use him for the time being until you get maybe a better hero, such as one of his pairings like Eliana. You can use a Eliana and Bakar combo. This is a very tanky combo and it will deal enough damage to punch through a lot of the free to play content for you guys. But the creme of the creme, which you can imagine, even though we dislike it, Garwood Bakar is a very insanely strong city wall garrison that you can put on, as well as if you're using it again, if you don't have a very good Nika, the Bakar and Garwood is a very good frontline for your Dragon Trials and PvE content, because you're not bothered about healing in PvE, because that's what you kind of want to do, but in PvP, it's the complete opposite. With Bakar, you can also try it. Fear. Fear is going to be a really good combo with Bakar because, again, you're going to give Bakar now that 1k shield, which does give him a lot of help, but the 15% extra skill damage dealt bonus is really good, as well as the attack bonus is very, very good, as well as the hero skill damage taken reduction. So this gives him all these nice stats that he were personally missing out on his kit. You can also do stuff like the... Um, Nika and as well as Madeline as obvious choices with your Bakar. These are going to be again if you're going to try maybe for a PvP build you could try using Madeline primary with a Bakar secondary and by doing that it's going to hide that Bakar so you won't get focused by the enemy players. So that is all of the pairings I'm going to really talk about today with Bakar. You guys could try some other different things since we did show his skills and the fact that his first skill here being all damage dealt and this skill and the awakening is a really good free skills that you kind of want on a lot of different marches. You could, in theory, try him with maybe a Emery's or Bakshi and obviously have these guys as the cavalry primary and have Bakshi behind just to give them an extra bit of oomph because you can imagine 20% extra damage now on the 1500 nuke is a lot of damage. So there are the pairings we're going to go over for the Bakar and we're going to go into your artifacts and if you guys are not wondering in my um, suggestions here I would not be using Bakar as a PvE raid tank. That is true, so you will not be using Harlequin's Mask with Bakar, but anything even like Veteran's Diary, really good infantry um, thing to use if you've got this early game. Another really good one if you've got it early game is Butcher's Blade. The fact it does 900 damage to up to three targets and it swings um, twice, as you see, that's a lot of damage. That's 1800 times two, which is 3600 damage. Really good um, epic to have for your infantry, Bakar, if you're trying to do as much damage. This is really good again in PvE. So if you're using it for Dragon Trials, I would highly, highly recommend. Again, Codex is good for Dragon Trials only. I would not use this anywhere else if you're looking to use this. But it is when you start getting into the legendary stuff. Dragon Rift, really, really powerful on Bakar because it's all about single target damage and it adds an additional sort of bleed effect to his march. So you can have a very good Dragon's Rift on him. You could also run anything like the Holy Trinity, which is your Dragon Scale Armor, as well as your Great Mars Warhammer, or even the Fang of a Shikari for infantry. These three are very good, depending on what you want. If you want to be a super tank and survive longer, Dragon Scale Armor might be the go-to artifact for you. But if you're trying to be a bit of a nuisance and stunlock players, Grey Mile Warhammer is the way to go. And if you're trying to be the guy that stops areas and try and deny areas and defend that zone, this is a very good artifact to do so. So that's why we call these the Holy Trinity in my eyes on the best free infantry artifacts at the moment that we use in the open field for a variety of reasons.
So, we've gone over the skills, we've gone over the parents and the artifacts. So now, let's move on to the craziness that is the talent pages for our Bakar. So what I'm going to go over first is the garrison tree. And why I'm going to go over the garrison tree, a lot of players still to this day might use Bakar as their city or garrison. Even though, as a big tip to all those players watching the video, you know that you won't get hit as often as you might have think if you are as long as you're on alliance territory so as long as you're on alliance territory you're not going to get hit or rallied so you don't have to worry about that um aspect but we'll go over the garrison tree first because it's nice and easy fast and quick to go over so we're going to go into the overall attack and then in a garrison tree we do not need march speed this is very very key guys so instead of the holy trinity of being attack march speed and health we will be going for attack, defense, and health because you're going to be a garrison leader or you're going to be garrisoning your city, meaning you're not going to be moving, guys. Your whole premise is to be as tanky and has as many stats as possible. So we're going to go into Mighty Power and then we're going to go access our garrison tree. And with this, this is a pretty simple tree that I really, really have got I'm fond of. We're going to go in the overall health into overall defense and then you have two choices you can go into repression which isn't that great at first when you do look at it because the watchtowers do lose a lot of their defense alternatively what i really really like is the options of counter attack damage or normal attack damage that is true you can go for this but in my eyes and a lot of people might say this in the comment section now watchtowers honestly they deal negative damage so this obviously doesn't really help your city too much the watchtowers generally get destroyed very very quickly so this is why it is an alternative choice if you really wanted to test it but is a garrison march i would honestly go for five out of five on your garrison repost this is going to allow you to deal 10 percent more counter-attack damage absolute phenomenal especially when you're in a garrison and that is one of the most primary focuses of damage when we go into the top tree we have the new set of talents now which is the fair defense so what fair defense does it is a very powerful artifact talent that you can use for your march what it does as you read in a fair fight all unit skills are disabled meaning none of your skill one two three and fours will be working and the attributes of inventory cavalry marksman and magic units will be the same level and adjusted to the same values so what this means is if we go back and look quickly into any of our units very fast as you notice, these are all of your buffs. And because these are all of your buffs, the green number is what's going to be added onto your attack. So in a fair fight, this actually removes these numbers and it's going to be base stats only. So we're going to see if a base stat march would be out, you know, better than another march. And you might be wondering, why would you be wanting this? Why do you want to be dealing this as a garrison or potentially rally lead and the reason is again you might be fighting against someone who could be potentially stronger than you in those skills and because he's stronger than you in those skills you can force him to not use them and come into a level playing field where potentially that unit advantage system might beat him so fair defense very very good talent i would recommend using this with the new changes in garrisoning but you can also pick the amazing Thorn Barrier. This is another effect that will reduce the target's attack and defense by 8% by inflicting those defense and gloom effects onto the target. So both of these are honestly really, really good. If you feel like you are naturally stronger than most players, I would recommend Thorn Barrier. But if you're uncertain... Fair defense will always be a valid, valid choice. From here, we're going to go up and you could go for a variety of different choices here. 
I personally do not go for flank protection because when you're in a garrison, generally it's always a singular rally that generally hits the city or the pass. There's not been many cases at the moment where we're seeing multiple rallies getting hit at the same time. So what you can do then is either take, again, garrison determination, which is going to reduce that damage dealt, or you can now increase the amount of skill damage your Bacar deals. And this is honestly a very powerful effect because you got think 20% more damage plus an additional 10% hero skill damage now on that effect will be very beneficial. Especially if that march now hits below the 50% um, marker, you're going to start absolutely melting them with that bleed. So we do have two of the best garrison talents in my eyes right here and that is arrogance and the grumpy both of these are made to do different sorts of rage generation so whenever we launch a normal attack we can generate rage and whenever we are serving as the captain and we get hit by a normal attack we also gain a chance so we definitely are going to be rocking both of these uh, um, talents because if we rock both of these talents it's going to allow us to have super high rage cycling uptime and allow us to beat our opponents through our skills if they do not challenge us into that fair defense or fair fight finishing off the build we will go for sacred realm giving us that massive amount of healing while we are fighting. It's only a 10% chance, so this will not obviously feed too many merits, as I've always said in many different builds, but it will give you that bit of an edge. You could choose, if you'd like to choose the formidable, this will make your garrison obviously a little bit um, less tankier, but you'll be dealing a considerable amount of damage. So it's up to you where we're going to go for the garrison tree. But from there, I would do the skill tree. And from the skill tree, we will take overall attack, health, rage, rage generation, and finally, the shelter of concentration or the 4% or 0.4% of enemy health mitigation. And the reason why we take this tree at the end is, again, because you're garrison leading, we're trying to go for as many stats as possible and the best stats as we can. So health is king when we go into pvp and we're going to get that raid generation again to help our garrison build now fire off its skills so quickly if you're going to check that out we're going to go down the um, garrison into the pregnable defense counter attack into either fair defense if you feel a little bit uncertain or if you very feel strong for a barrier and then we will be taking uh, into great garrison determination then the arrogance grumpy and finally going into sacred realm to then go into your sacred tr skill tree for that 17 points and you'll be getting that extra attack the extra health rage generation nice and simple build for garrison i hope that makes sense on why i like this build for garrisoning with your bakar on the city if you choose to so that is that build now we're going to go over the two builds that we most likely will see on a Bacar. You have two trees and these are honestly the only two trees generally we ever use on Bacar. And that's because they're going to be used for patrol killing in PvE. If you want to try and use these as a PvP build, you can happily try these. I'm not going to say they do not work. But again, which we said in the skill section of the video, just remember, Bakar is not the tankiest hero. So he will die really quickly. So in the skill build, this is again a build all about skill damage, trying to take advantage of that effect. So what we're going to do is go now in the Holy Trinity instead of the other way. And the reason we're going in the Holy Trinity because this will be open field PvP as well as PvE content. So we're going to have overall attack, march speed and the health. Then into mighty power like always. And then we're going to start the skill tree. From the skill tree, we're going to grab overall attack. We're going to grab the overall health still and the rage generation just to give our march as many rage generation capabilities as it can as well as honestly a little bit of health that we will need in this build. You could be very ambitious and choose the intimidation for super big hits but in my eyes I personally prefer overall health. 
From there, when once we've completed our rage generation, we're going to go up into the Uncritchable Will, Skill Focus, as well as Rage and Tide to punish the enemy and deal as much skill crit damage and skill crit chance for our units. From here, we will take First of Blood just to finish off the build, and this will give us a nice little bit of extra skill damage whenever we cast our rage skills. From there, you will move into the infantry tree, and in the infantry tree, we will take the infantry defense into intimidation this time, and then into normal attack and either cool headed or furious. I personally prefer cool headed. The reason, again, you can see this giving yourself extra defense stats whenever we're casting our rage skill is very good, especially if we have a very high uptime on doing that. So being able to cast this is going to give Bakar that little bit of tankiness that he's always missing out in the builds and in his skills. From here, I would put my last point into cavalry counter tactics just to punish those cavalry players. So that is going to be the skill and infantry tree just to cover it for you guys. You're going to go down the overall health as well as the attack rage generation and then the top side giving you the ignore enemies health mitigation and then the skill crit damage and chance into your um, top one first of blood finishing off the skill tree giving you all that pack for punch and payoff for going down it and then we will finish down the infantry tree giving us the defense now taking the skill damage to help us out and then normal finishing off with in cool headed so i hope that makes sense for this skill tree and no we don't have obviously all the talent points available but as you guys know the main account has gone through a talent reset or a season reset so not all the heroes are going to be leveled up at the moment so that's why we're going to be working with what we have on screen so now just to finish off the last build this is going to be a infantry based build and i actually really like running the infantry based build more because it does fulfill i believe your task as mayor of a bruiser march with the bakar so what we you do is pretty simple we're going to go into infantry attack we're going to put one point into infantry speed and four points into intimidation and the reason why we're going to have this little bit of extra march speed which will help us close down cavalry units i promise you that with this you can choose two either normal um, attack damage increase which is really good again for infantry players or if you're going to use your bakar to pair with someone like garwood the healing will help you out but i personally wouldn't choose this i would go for the normal attack damage from there you're going to still get cool headed to give us that rage um, skill trigger whenever we cast our skill one we're going to gain that nice beautiful four percent extra defense for three seconds and then we have a couple of options and this is where the things does get a little bit optional do you want to be a cavalry nuisance yes five out of five cavalry counter tactics nice and easy not even go into it if you want to deal damage and be a nuisance and be a punisher to those cavalry players this is the one you're always going to be going although if you're going to be a infantry player that you want to try and tank the most amount of damage from all different types of sources all conquering will be way way better for you because it's going to allow you as a march to basically fire off a bunch of um skills and obviously tank a ma massive amount of archer damage or normal hit from cavalry infantry and majors so really really good um talent to run in this build we're not going to go down the counter attack damage route what we do do is go down the generous route and the reason why we're going to gain a mass amount of stats five percent for five seconds is amazing for us and the cool thing is we're going to be abusing generalist and the cool headed by finishing off the build when we get to it iron will iron will is going to increase everything by one second and one second is an extra turn of combat and you will be surprised how much one turn of combat worth of extra stats will affect a plan with this you can go simply in the last three i would put four points into encouraging dance and one point into flank protection or you can put all five into encouraging dance the reason why i personally put one point into flank protection 
15% less bonus damage taken from being surrounded is a considerable amount of damage reduction from this surrounded trigger. So it does help you as an infantry player when you are going to get surrounded by different other frontline units like the infantry and cavalry units. So once you've gone down this build, we will go down the skill tree. We're going to go and grab the overall attack. We're going to grab the health, rage, generation, and we're still going to grab concentration here to give us that extra bit of stats for the build. So when we look at this, this is an infantry stat based build, more tankier than the last infantry build. And what I would go again, just to allow you to understand it nice and easy, we're going to go overall defense. We're going to go into now the um, egoism and then into normal attack rule um, cool headed and then depending on where you're going you're gonna have all conquering then into generalist into one point flank protection four points into encouraging dance finishing off the tree with iron will and then with your last 17 points you'll go five points five points five points one and one so that hopefully gives you guys the tree you're going to need for the car you've got a infantry tree which i personally prefer to run compared to the skill tree but i also give you guys a nice garrison tree to try out and run if you're going to ever get hit by a city rally so that is going to be all of the talents for the car now we've covered everything to do with him that is your skills pairings artifacts and talent trees as well as his general role within the game and as a nice little tip and overall summary like i said i wouldn't personally invest into bakar very very quickly because i don't believe he's that good he is a very average or below average hero when it comes to the epic tier especially if you're going to compare him for example, to someone like Eliana. Eliana, a really good tank and infantry hero compared to the Bakar. So, I hope that video is enjoyable. Sorry if you guys absolutely Bakar, and even though he is shaking his head himself and in disbelief, but that is going to be the guide for Bakar from myself. Hopefully, it gives you all the information that you're going to need to ruin all of your enemies and kill them and put them in the ground. So, if you enjoyed the video, smash a like, comment, and subscribe. But until the next one, stay safe, stay sneaky. Peace out.